on behalf of eight of them, has contacted me uh, to set up a meeting to discuss you know, what their intentions are, what they're looking for, and probably the city and the mayor and I to discuss what the city's um, you know, thoughts are on the entire, on the entire thing. Well, important to note, because this detention pond and this drain here, which drains to the back of the property, um, we left these in here because they are technically must be built also for the benefit of the condo development. What we did in the amendment was make sure, number one, that we had, as the city and owner of this property, easement rights for the access road going in and out, so we have access to it, and also to be able to use these you know, utility facilities. All right? So that is reserved in there. And what we have put in there is that once this property starts to become developed, whether it's City of Taylor or somebody else's property, then the owner essentially takes over maintenance of those easements. Because then you're talking about a property that has rights to that, that again is like 90% of the property. And these individual units would share in the maintenance of that. And there are some mechanisms in there to make sure that we are protected, that we have access to the property, that we are protected on what the property needs. And of course, at that point in time, um, you know, there's probably going to be some negotiation between the parties and okay, right here. I mean, this is this just because this I is just carved out this way. Required to build these condos, but the chances are the other ones might not be around much longer anyway. So we wouldn't want to build anything. Yeah, but with, without getting ahead of now, yeah. yeah, without getting ahead of ourselves. Right. Um, it, you know, once we've made this move, um, you know, all of this is open to negotiation. What we're doing is. We're taking a strong stance on what we can do at this point in time to assert our rights to the property. And like I said, I think what we've done is we've created a condo plan for them, I think which is consistent with the master deed, consistent with the condo law, and uh, fair that it would be something that any court that were to look at this, if they were to object to this, would probably look at it and say, well, my gosh, they're, they're, they're providing the protections that you guys need. And, you know, they own this property right here. And this is a development that went belly up. I mean, now everybody's trying to unwind what's going on and what to do here. Was there yet another person that bought a piece of this property at the yes. very south end? Yes. Not at the south end. We'll call it on the east, east, side. Right. east side. Like east behind Home Depot. Right, right, right behind Home Depot. Right if you look at this property, you've got a straight edge here, straight edge here, straight edge here. And then you've got this rectangular piece sticking off on the east side. Now, I honestly can't figure out exactly how this happened. But somehow, a, a, a company, another LLC called First United, um, ended up owning this rectangle. And what's unique about this and interesting is that we own the units, and I, forget, I don't have the drawing of the original plan, but there's like eight to 12 units or buildings that would go here that we actually own the units on top of this land. So I honestly don't know how this happened down at Wayne County where somebody ended up owning this little block of land. Um, but it has happened. We have put them on notice as well, and we have pulled out all of the property, including this property. Now, my understanding, I haven't received any contact from that company. Uh, my understanding that is they are in arrears in their taxes, and that's probably going into foreclosure as well. Um, but that is a little bit of a wrinkle. It is a landlocked uh, piece of property of which we are, what's it called? First what? First, 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 first United. United. Yeah, First United uh, Enterprises LLC or something like that. I'm not, I haven't received any communication with them, and again, I think my understanding is that they're behind, uh, and they're right, according yes, to Jerry, yes. uh, they're behind in their taxes and maybe something that's... What about these eight owners? Are they, what are their responsibilities in the city? Are they paying taxes? Are they, you know, they, they, they bought into a failed project. They're maintaining rights, so we're working around them. But what obligation do they have to the city? Um, same as any taxpayer at this point in time. I believe, are they paying? Well, my understanding is that they were paying like every third year so that they wouldn't go into the company. The, the uh, one owner, Mr. 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 and Mr. Mrs. Zen, uh, are 100% paid in full. They are paying their taxes uh, complete. The Baccarat Holdings owns six of the eight units, and they are delinquent 
and property taxes. They paid, I think, July 2011 uh -huh. to keep from going into going foreclosure. In. Right. And now the other next two years are delinquent. Now, now to follow up with what uh, Councilman Woolley was also um, bringing up, uh, these individuals and these condos are in a bit of a quandary at this point in time because they have buildings built, they are not finished, there are no utility hookups mm -hmm. to the buildings, and the entire property is now um, zoned commercial. So there's there, there are some issues there with regard to whether or not or what they can build or build out, which is something that we'll be discussing uh, with them. And again, we have a meeting with uh, one of the owners of the two who indicated he was coming to coming to us on behalf of the, the eight. Oh. Is that the same that you're meeting with? Or? Yes. Okay. So this is a quite, quite a complex piece of property that uh, everybody asks, what are we doing with it? Well, the first thing we have to do is undo all of these problems. I guess, uh, you know, we have to go backward before we can go forward. Um, so that's really the action that, that will allow us to do that tomorrow night. Um, one of the things that Dave recommended to, to try to avoid situations like this from happening is looking at, at putting some an ordinance in place that prohibits them from parting out these parcels at the Wayne County auction. So if they buy something, they buy it all rather than buying just individual lots. Uh, for example, when Island Lakes went back, that could have been an absolute nightmare had that occurred because you could have had individual lots being sold off and then a hundred different developers coming forward. It would have been a nightmare. Thank goodness it didn't happen that way. But, you know, this one did to some extent. So we're trying to learn from this and put some protection in for the city so it doesn't happen in the future. Yeah, there, there is a provision in the Foreclosure Act that provides that the county can bundle properties, you know, and for something like this, or even like a, a housing development where the city has taken a lot of time and a PRD and as, you know how much time you you know you all take in looking. This is how we want it to look, and this is the part of the city that we're there. Then it all goes belly up, and then you've got you know 60 home sites that are uh, on sale at the Wayne County auction, and then you've got people buying individual uh, lots that want to come in and just start to build, and then you've got you know. So in order to do that, um, you know we have and I have successfully negotiated with Wayne County to make sure that they will bundle properties so they don't sell individual units or tax ID numbers, um, which they will do. They're usually, especially the last several years with many of these projects. That, I mean, this is not, this is a little bit unique, actually, <laughs> this particular project with some of the things that are there. But as far as the developer walking away, it's not something that's been you know, unique over the last several years. One of the good things for the city of Taylor, there was one developer that, that had five, six, seven different developments going and, and uh, there, was a, there was a lawsuit that was entered into and a consent agreement that was reached that kind of gave us some protection on a lot of the developments in the city of Taylor. This, the one we're looking at, uh, Timber's Edge, what was the one that was by Taylor Meadows that we took back, that was another one that wasn't part of that group and then Island Lakes wasn't part of that group. But for the most part, all the other developments were, which it's my understanding that most of them they will go forward and develop over the next upcoming years. Two of them are going to start development this year. So th this looks to be kind of the last wrinkle of the, the bigger developments, unless something really goes sideways with this other group. Um, but who knows in the future? You know, again, just trying to put the parameters in place so it gives us some, some more protection. You can imagine for these people that bought these at the auction, they think that they're going to live there. They think they're going to develop them. I mean, they, and that's kind of their argument. You know, we bought a condo and we want to live there. Zone commercial. They don't have utilities. And quite honestly, I'm not sure how safe the, the, the standing units even are anymore. So, um, you know, there's a lot that we have to, to put on the table with them. And we kind of really hold the liability, would we? Wouldn't they have to go after Wayne County since they're the ones that sold the to them? I'm not the expert in that. them a house in a commercial zoned area. <laughs> I think it's all as is. It's all as is, and it would be not even necessarily Wayne County's fault. I mean, it's they're the buyer. Correct. I mean, like I said, they bought, they bought in a failed condo development. Um, I'm not sure exactly when they bought it, but it is a zone commercial uh, property at this point in time. It's a difficult issue of property. That's why we're taking this action, which is a, a bit complex on, on this. But I think we've done a good job in carving this out. Um, we've put the property owners on notice. My understanding was is they weren't uh, 
we weren't in communication necessarily or getting communication back. We now have, and we're going to have a meeting about what everybody's intentions are regarding that. In the meantime, we're just moving forward with our piece of property to make sure that we can do what we want. So to the future of this site, um, there is an interested party. Um, Jerry did run a certified assessment to get a, a baseline value established, and that's kind of where it's left. We haven't heard anything back, so we don't know if they're going to make an offer or not.